Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of Sweet Interviews. Uh, I wanted to start this series with a very special guest. Thanks the first and I would say one of the longest friends I've had in my life. Appreciate and you. I wanted to make sure that if there's anyone who gets the honor, it's him. So besides being one of my closest friends, he's also one of the best people in our major in terms of performance, in terms of experience. And I wanted you guys to hear more about him. So without further ado, welcome. This is my friend Omar Hisham, so welcome. Thank you, bro. So we'll Appreciate get started you. with the first thing is, I mean, I know much, a lot about you, obviously, but For a sure. lot of people don't. So why don't you get us started with where you were born, raised, the school you went to, and so on. Sure. So the early life, basically. Yeah, so I'm from Egypt originally. I was born in Egypt, but I lived all my life in Saudi Arabia. I grew up there, and then um, I went to an American school for all my life and um i just came to purdue like nice. i applied to purdue yeah um, so but i, I want to say like back in high school did you have this you know feeling or thoughts that you all you wanted to become a computer engineer what was the thought process back when you were in high school that, that what was the thought process that helped you apply to college or that you used to get to college for sure so in high school like i was honestly lost like i was yeah. lost like I knew I wanted to do something along the lines of like science, okay. um, like STEM majors essentially, but I never knew what I wanted to do. Really? But then I had an older brother, he was like three years older than me. Okay. Um, he ultimately chose to go to the route of engineering and becoming a mechanical engineer. However, like, so like most of the decisions in terms of like courses that I had to take and stuff, were influenced by what he had to take okay so like in terms of family and stuff they would always tell me like oh your brother did this so might as well like you take it as well and stuff like that so this is i would think this is like the essential thing that like shaped up what i wanted to become or like what what i wanted to pursue in college but i i vaguely had an idea oh i, I wanted see. to be an engineer I see. but okay. i did not know like specifically that i wanted to become a computer engineer until like one of my I took one of my courses was AP computer science mm -hmm. because my brother took it okay and in that course my teacher she like um how do I put this she never like believed in Ooh. in me in a way like she would always like look at my grades and be like oh yeah no this guy is never gonna make it he's in the wrong class wow. essentially or whatever because like there was only like six people in that class Ooh. and my performances were not that great compared to other people in that class so she might like she thought I might not have been the best fit for that class okay and it really bugged me off like she did not believe in me whatsoever um so in a way that motivated me like as cliche as it sounds to like provoke try my her. yeah provoke her and try my best you know I mean? and um i did really well on the ap exam okay and uh from then i actually like in the process i actually like liked the concept of like computer science and coding and stuff but at that time like i i just so like I just thought that the status quo of becoming like an engineer is much True. cooler than it sounds CS. to become a CS major. I so see. that's why I became a computer engineer. I see. So uh, just in terms of the APs, you mentioned that briefly um, when you were doing the APs. What do you remember vaguely or vividly why you decided on to take the APs that you did, or was it again because of your brother, or what, did the school did actually did the school play any role in giving you guys any like? direction or sense of direction like if you want to go into this major you should probably do ap's or if you want to go into that major you should do those was there any anything of that sort? no it was, it, was, it was honestly like uh it was a free-for-all thing like okay. it was open to whoever wants to take it and uh like you said like it was mostly like oh my brother took this then like most probably i do have to take this I something along these lines so i want i want to stop for one quick minute and i want to say like he breezed through this point, <coughs> excuse me, about like proving his teacher wrong. And I think this is one of the many qualities that make this guy special. Because we're going to get to this at a later point, but he's one of those people who like when he faces an issue or a struggle, he's not, you know, the kind of guy to back off and say, you know what, nah, let me try and find some other path. He's going to say, you know what, whether I enjoy it or not, the fact that I'm in it already, I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to finish it. I'm going to make sure I finish well. So we just covered your high school tell me about some of the sports that you were involved in you know what was what was your life like because not many people know this but he's probably one of the very few people in his life who got hurt as much 
if not more than me, in terms of physical injuries. Like he even came here as a freshman with a cast, but we'll get to that in a minute. So yeah, tell me like some sports or some, some of the things you were involved in during your, your high school. So during my high school, like I, I played a lot of soccer. I was, mm -hmm. on, the, I was on the team. Nice. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> through, through like graduation Throughout. stuff, yeah. And um, like essentially, I, I do a lot of swimming as well. Okay. Uh, sometimes I do running. But like essentially like the the one thing that I've always like wanted to do even professionally like as a kid like if you ask me what yeah. what would you want to become like obviously uh, like a football player um so this was the only like sport per se that like I was really invested in and like I actually put a lot of effort into it I see do, do you think because of the sport you developed this I, I want to say winner mindset or like this mindset of not giving up because as we know like sports in general they they develop your not just your physical abilities, but your just psychological and your mental health as well. Do you think it might have been one of those things, or do you think you were just born with that will and desire to just overcome any obstacles? Yeah, you know, obviously, like it helps. Like when you, for example, play with people older than you, absolutely, you become better essentially absolutely. in playing that sport. True. So it's just developing that mindset of oh, I'm willing to learn from these people, or um, there's always room for learning, and. I felt I felt like I I was always like this like you know like if I if I was put in a situation where like I can be better or like I can learn from something then I take that opportunity. Okay, so. that's nice. I'm gonna refer to this sheet that's just fine. to make sure that I don't forget any uh, any of the questions. So we're gonna go through. Um, yeah, one of the questions that a lot of people ask is. You know what does it feel like to be a senior or things like that i don't want to go into that just yet but what i want to go into is your feeling as a senior in computer engineering and how you reflect on that decision so do you ever have second thoughts about like whether this is the right major for me or you know if you had something else in mind 100 really? percent, all the time <laughs> like all like the time. sophomore year is when i realized that Ooh. mistakes have been made that wow. honestly like yeah it's not the major for me like especially like when you when you like start to like oh go deep into the major and like uh the core classes started like spring up and stuff so this is when i realized that yeah i'm not really interested about like the hardware or like mm. the electrical side of things i'm more interested in the software side of things and if time were to go back i would 100 percent change my major to okay. cs cs so let's say let's say someone is 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 debating you know he thinks cs and computer engineering are essentially the same thing or like he's heard of the differences but you know he's not sure how, what was, what's the best way that you would put it in your opinion what's the difference between cs and computer engineering so cs is more like focused on like the application of softwares and things and mm -hmm. computer engineering um is more focused on like the theory of things and um it also focuses on like the hardware aspect of it. I see. But um, I feel like the CS majors they they learn a lot about how to apply things and like how to relate to the real world and like I see. just develop an overall like better thought. Like they they they, they had like have a well-rounded I see. Um, okay. Knowledge of so, software engineering. So in other words, you think maybe computer engineering like obviously in both majors you learn a lot of useful information yeah. but you think that the CS maybe has a little bit of a more direct influence as to like the transferable skills into the job market as opposed to computer engineering is that basically what I mean it honestly depends on the person right mm. like if he wants to True. also have like a hands-on experience in terms of like electrical and stuff mm. um, yeah. then probably EC is where he would want to be but, okay. but then again like CS and like EC they're very like intertwined and in, like in a sense that both of them like they're very like th th they share a lot of similar concepts and they're overlapping it's just that and then you also like find like software like a software engineer can be both an, like come True. an ece or like a cs major okay um it just really depends on like what what's per like what's that person's interest like for me honestly like i realized but i realized late that um i don't like hardware at all i see zero <laughs> so, nothing <laughs> yeah zero <laughs> Uh, I yeah I realized this but I was already late and I as you said like if, if I started something I'm gonna finish it done true um, that's why like I, I just took it as a challenge to just go through this major and uh, you know like you know when, when you when you st when I started applying for like to, to, to go through the ECE program you know like uh, I thought that ECEs make like or computer engineers make more money than CSEs, but 
honestly like it's it's, it's all lies that, like yeah. an entry level is an entry level like you'll get what you get like it's gonna be That's a standard true. thing for like probably any like any place you end up i agree the, and then the, this leads me on to the next question so in terms of someone who's in the cs department or like who's studying cs versus someone who's studying computer engineering do you think these people end up you know fighting for different jobs or th is it the same job and then like as a computer engineer like what what, what was your perspective on that they, they do <laughs> they do fight for the same jobs for the they, same job. they they honestly do and like as i said it's because like uh, like it's overlapping mm. so like a lot of the skills that like the recruiters or like the companies look for are present in both the ECE people and the CS people um, so in terms of like the fighting like fighting for jobs is uh, we do as well like compete for jobs and that's why like at career fairs and stuff like you'd find CS students standing in the line for ECs and stuff 100%. So. Uh, now like there's one point that was one perspective that I heard you know especially when I first got into the major as well was that well, as a computer engineer, you have this flexibility, right? The CS majors, more or less, they go into things like data science or software engineering or, or you know, other pretty narrow or specific um, entry-level jobs. But as a computer engineer, you have a little bit of a broader spectrum. But do you think this spectrum pretty much closes down if you're not interested in the hardware side? So, you, so would you say, like, if you're not interested in the hardware side, you're pretty much at a disadvantage if you're a computer engineer? I would, more say, I, I would say so, right? Because, like... Um, if you do CS, like if you do CS, then you're more like you said restricted to like a broad spectrum. I see. But then ECE, like you have a lot of options. Like it, there's like a lot of career prospects that you can um, you can do telecommunications, um, signal processing, a lot of stuff. Computer but like if you, yeah, yeah. computer security, all that stuff. But like then if you don't, if you're not really like interested in hardware, then like you're restricting yourself True. to like. So in terms of you as a person, you know, obviously with the with the major in, in mind. If, if you think back to your career or the job search process over the, the course of three years, now we're, we're both seniors, but, you know, from your freshman year until now, what would you say some of the common challenges were that you just kept coming across every single time you applied? So, like, the first challenge is building my resume. Ooh. Like, I, I came as a... This know, is like, an important one. Yeah, yeah like... An important one, yeah. You're just a senior in like in high school. You don't know. You barely know what uni you're gonna apply to. Let alone True. that like you have to apply and pick for a major and stuff. So like you don't even know how to build a resume. You don't know what what should go on there, what True. shouldn't go on there. So like I remember like the first career fair I went to in high school and uh, in college, freshman year, yeah, yeah. freshman year, and bro, I had nothing on my resume. Like nothing that would make me stand out or whatever. Like I had like I struggled to like list experiences to Ooh. put on my resume and stuff, and. When you talk to the resume, you feel like, yeah, why is this guy talking to me? You mean talk to, to the recruiter? Yeah, yeah talk yeah, to the yeah, recruiter. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. He, 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 yeah, he goes like, yeah, why is this guy talking to me? Like, he doesn't have any experiences and stuff. And, like, I really, like, I'm taking the initiative to come and talk to you. I really do want to work and I really do, like, want to have experience. But how can I have experience without having experience? True. Yeah, you that's know? the dilemma here. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, they, so any, any, any company or any place that, like, that you would want to work for like they would require you to have prior experiences okay but coming to college you know you barely have experiences in internships or like research experience or whatever like wow. so yeah how am i meant to have experience or have a strong resume if i'm just a freshman that don't doesn't wow. have like so you'd say resume um not having experience what about uh the visa status because both of us were international students we're here on the f1 visa as probably half Purdue students are international students as well so do you think that had an impact on, on your search process as well? Yeah, 100%. Uh, like, obviously, like, you're competing with a lot of people, a lot of different categories. 100%. And for us as internationals, like, it's much more of a challenge for the company itself to, like, pick us because they would, they, they would have, like, to sponsor us and pay for, pay for, like, sponsoring us, essentially. True. And it, it really, like, poses a, a challenge because you might be as qualified as other uh, like other people but yeah. then you're like you're still at a disadvantage because like you're not from this country and like if you do um if you do qualify and then there's another person that does qualify obviously they would yeah, they'd pick him. yeah. So. it'd be like pretty much if you're on the same standard because there's like this cost that they have to put in so if for the people who don't know as an international student you're here on an f1 visa and that allows you to you know pretty much study in the university you're in and then like if you want you can get an on-campus job but if you want to work for a different company there's this sponsorship um 
or the company has to sponsor you and pay for you per, like if you want sorry if you want to work full time after you graduate the company has to sponsor and pay for you to change your visa to go from like an F1 which is a study visa to a work visa and these the costs of the sponsorship can actually get really really expensive and that's what discourages a lot of people which goes back to his point so if, if you have two almost equally qualified people one's international and one's domestic because they're really qualified if there's almost nothing that differentiates one over the other they're going to go for the cheaper option because i think the work visa costs like thousands if not tens of thousands of dollars and you know for a lot of people that's like a year an annual salary you can you can hire an extra person instead of you know sponsoring an international student so do you do you think the the overall the mentality of like fo focusing only on the gpa versus you know getting research or focusing on an internship so as an as a freshman or even sophomore did you feel that you know lack of clarity as to what you should focus on in order to get a job yeah yeah bro i was i was lost i was honestly lost like freshman year like i i didn't even like put my mind into it like i didn't know like finding a job like or like finding an internship or like experience here important. in the u.s wasn't was really important you know That's until true. like i saw the career fair i was like wow like <laughs> yeah there's a lot of people that, that showed up and i was like I should probably take this seriously and stuff. That's true. But then, I was honestly like, yeah, I, I, I had no idea in terms of like, oh, if I should um, focus on. Obviously, like grades has always been 100%. A, a thing, like 100%. since yeah. school, you know. That's, uh, yeah. Like, put that <laughs> put aside, it on the yeah, side, yeah. Put it on the side, <laughs> the same. Um, yeah, but I didn't know like experiences and research and stuff because like you don't you don't do this stuff in high school. Either. True. Like you don't it's do this, yeah. Like yeah. So you you never heard about like a research assistant in high school or something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So, but then it's something like you learn as you go like as as you as you progress to like your um, college career that you do really need to have like um, extracurricular experiences in terms of like research in terms of being involved in. Um, in organizations or like just being actively involved like I you see. have to do something like 100 percent. yeah i, yeah. I would it's, it's a max it, like it's a mix of everything True. it's not it's not like uh yeah i would just focus only like, on only on on grades no you, True. You, grades do play a, a role but like honestly not not that great of a deal you know like yeah like you, not enough of a role yeah, you mean, can neglect the other stuff basically yeah exactly so it's a mix of things i see um <sighs> let me see tell me so, okay, for those who don't know, as I, I, I might have mentioned this at the beginning of the interview, but Omar got a, an internship at Qualcomm at the big, uh, this past summer. And, you know, for, for all of us as friends and most of our, the, our group is, is an international students group, we were all really happy for him. But there was one common question, which is, you know, what were some of the things that helped you stand out or helped this be the, the successful attempt at getting a job? So if you can just run me through the things that you did right, as opposed to how you used to do them before, mm -hmm. and and how this time it worked out for Qualcomm. Okay, so like the first thing, uh, like I as I said before, like you have to really set like your mind into something mm. to get it. So like freshman year, I wasn't like I wasn't really like I bothered enough to like True. put in a hundred percent to getting a job and stuff. But like after I realized though that this is important and stuff. So one thing that you really need to do in, is research the company <coughs> know what it does know what its value that's, that's important no like no look no no their latest trends their news what are they up to and that revolves also around you and how you can contribute to the company because like 95 percent of the students that walk up to a recruiter from a company and start telling them oh this is my experience this is my skills what what positions are like what job do you think is going to suit me in your company true bro it's a it's a two-way thing Absolutely. like they're like they, they want you to like show up and tell them oh i know you have a problem in this area and i can help contribute this problem by having this certain skill because like I'm, I'm skilled in this area and um i can help you in this area or whatever like I so see. So I always like try to like resonate to the company and relate back to what what how can you help how can you add what what value can you add to the company I see yeah. so basically taking initiative a lot of people as you said they just walk up and they expect the recruiter to just you know look at you and think you're a brilliant student but that almost never happens you know like I only know of one person who like where that happened where like he didn't necessarily sell himself but his resume sold you know sold itself for him but like we're talking about an, an exception here like he's the only one in our major that we know 
So in other cases, in normal cases, in, in you know, we can say the average cases, you're, you're suggesting that the applicant go and take the initiative, right? Right. And so, you know, going back to, you, you mentioned the career fair and that a lot of people attend. Do you think there's, you know, did you see a huge benefit of attending these really big career fairs? Or what about applying online? What do you think of that? Because, yeah, you, you go to the career fair, you talk to the recruiter, and then he tells you go and apply online, and you apply online, and you just feel like you're just submitting a resume into, like, a big space. Right. So what has been your experience or what's... So, like, the, your, yeah. the first two years, like, anywhere I went, like, they told me apply online. They just, yeah. like, waited for me to finish whatever I was pitching, and then they told me, yeah, I'll yeah, go apply go online. online. But then I realized, I, honestly, it's beneficial that... And I would go back to the last question you said, that before going, just... You, you have to be very prepared in terms of like what you, you have to like narrow down your options you don't just walk to a short line and yeah. like start handing <laughs> yeah. out resumes you know like you really have to know what you're looking for what company you want to work at and then you have to apply online before that so that 100%. when you show up and you they tell you to apply in line you tell them like yeah i already, I already did. did i just wanted to come and show how much i'm interested in this company and what value i can add wow. to this company and why i really want to work for this company and this is how i'm going to help you so like you have to like always make them think that you're helping them absolutely you're like it's it's something that you're gonna add to this company you're trying we, to help yeah okay yeah we just walk up and we like in any in simple terms we're like please give me a job yeah, no, true. i'm struggling and no one's gonna do job. that why should i hire you over like these all the, like all the other people that are standing in line absolutely it's because you're showing interest in the company and you you can tell them what i can add to this company true. so if going back to your question right now like if you come prepared and if you really know what you want to do with this company or something then career fairs become beneficial in terms Absolutely. of like expressing interest and even though like they would remember you oh this guy is the one that talked to us about how he can help us 100%. and stuff 100%. so it would make you stand out essentially like i remember i vividly remember the day where we were in the qualcomm line for the like where when they when they came to campus it was the career fair and Omar was ahead of me in the line and I remember when he talked to the recruiter like it was a different kind of conversation than when I talked or when you know some of our other other friends talked like they looked like they were having a really nice conversation it was formal but it was like it looked like both of the sides enjoyed it I would say because he probably prepared a lot like would you say you know maybe for the Qualcomm position because there's another thing that he does which makes him stand out when he's when he's standing in those long lines instead of just like messing around or looking at people or whatever he's on he's on his phone researching the company he's looking at the news because you know these long lines can be annoying but if you like approach them in a really nice and tactical manner you can make a, a lot out of it so i would say like maybe like would you say that contributed because i i know you do this a lot so do you think yeah for sure 100 percent. like 100 percent. you don't you don't understand like when i started taking this approach and like of the researching the company researching first. the company and how i can help and all that stuff like i actually got a lot of interviews well wow. i i'm not saying i made yeah, it to yeah. all of them like the True. visa status always like stands 100%. in the way like you know get, oh yeah you're international <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> On the side. yeah but um at least it got me like it broke the barrier you know like True. it got me to a step where i can actually show my potential absolutely where i can because like when you go out there like do you essentially like supposedly don't sell yourself properly true so giving me an interview is like okay a chance to actually prove what i'm worth or what i'm capable of i see and um this is why like i actually take i took it very seriously and like it, it it led me to getting a lot of interviews after thing like after two years of just Nothing. zero yeah, yeah. Dry, all of yeah. a sudden on the other end yeah so okay it started to click i'm like okay i see wow. a trend here you know like i see wow. that oh yeah it actually works you know nice. so. so honestly I, I would like one of the first recommendations i'd make like the, from this interview you, you are going to leave with a lot of pieces of advice but one common trend is start working on them now as opposed to like wait until you fail and and then try and learn be like oh i watched this interview where i heard someone you know just he, we we have both made these mistakes and in in this case he's the one who played the better approach and and we're all here trying to benefit so make sure you're you're keeping all the pieces of advice in mind and make sure that you like take them into action as soon as you can so the next question i'm going to go on on to is you're applying to grad school now for a master's degree mm. so uh, just as a like a quick point, is that going to be for computer engineering or is it going to be computer science? Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's tough. It's honestly yeah. tough because um, I'm applying to both, honestly. Okay. I'm applying to both. So it depends on what I'm, I get accepted to. Mm -hmm. But um, 
I honestly, I have no idea at this point. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know. Which one you'd prefer to yeah. get into. Because this leads me to the other question, and I know, like, graduate school, a lot of people think, oh, you want to get a master's degree, it's just like applying from school. And yeah, there are some similarities and differences, like you have to take a standardized test, the GRE in this case, you have to have some referrals, you know, from professors, but it's, it's all taken one step you know, like in, in terms of like, it's one step more difficult than what you did in school. So can you talk to me a little bit about some of the challenges or some of the, like the things you faced and you, you just hoped someone would have given you like a heads up a little bit earlier for right. your grad school applications? Exactly, so um, letters of recommendation mm -hmm. and is a huge thing. Cause like when you're applying to grad school, you're expected at least like three letters of recommendations wow. from like legitimate sources. And we're talking about good letters of recommendation. Yeah, we're, yeah. Even if you want to get accepted. True, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, not like, okay, or yeah, like, yeah, yeah, he's a good no, student. Like, yeah, for sure. And typically, you would want, you would want three, right? But mm -hmm. one would fall under, like, a different category. You True. Would want, you'd want one that talks, like, that talks about how good you are and, like, work experience, your working environment, working mm -hmm. with teams and stuff. One that talks about your research mm -hmm. aptitude. And then one that talks about your academia or, like, how, how, lear how fast do you learn things or, I like, see. Yeah, how like, what are your like um, skills in the class and stuff like that? So I made like I made uh, somewhat a mistake of like not not getting to know my professors on like mm. a closer level. I only we both we yeah. all like all of True, us yeah, yeah, all, the whole group yeah, yeah we all know like this certain professor right and it's mostly due to like oh sticking around his office asking him for questions and stuff like that. But like he, you know, like he got to know us for like two three years and. Uh, I made a mistake of not talking to other professors or not being as close to them because like right now like I'm I'm pretty tight on options as to like one I want like who you who, can talk who, to yeah, and exactly, who to ask who for a recommendation to, like, yeah yeah so like it puts me in like a kind of a sticky situation sticky situation <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. I can't um, so obviously I'm gonna ask this guy but like you ultimately like preferably you would want to like talk to people and like start networking networking is, is key Ooh. man it's key in so would college. you say networking professors students or Pro just like professor, everyone no yeah. professors for letters of recommendation 100%. but students to get jobs to get like 100%. research experience whatever so like yeah but you have to be very prepared in terms of like oh like you have to take this thing seriously where like you need to like oh talk to professors know them True. Like and show them yourself so that they remember you and stuff and start building connections with your fellow like um, classmates. Absolutely, and 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 I want you to tell me or to tell the audience, the the, the GRE isn't like the SAT. It's not a paper based exam. For those who don't know, excuse me. For those who don't know, the GRE is on the computer, and the questions get progressively harder as you answer them correctly. Now, that's besides the point, but the point is a lot of people start preparing for it late or register for it during the semester. Now, again, this shows, uh, you know, some of the forward thinking that Omar does is he did it in summer. Um, and like, I just want you to briefly, so that we can move on to other questions, but briefly tell me about some of the advantages of you doing it in summer versus the semester. Okay, so I'm, I'm honestly gonna tell you like why I started applying for graduate school. Okay. We changed my mind. So like at some point in my life, I wanted to do like I wanted to pursue like higher higher level, level studies, education okay. right but then I did not know wh at what point in my life I wanted mm. to do that that's very important what I was thinking of before this summer started is that man get me out of here like as soon yeah. as I graduate I'm done Just I'm gonna go. go work you know I'm done with school and stuff then like when I did the internship I realized that like you know any engineer or any person I talked to over there they had a higher like they, they they had pursued like their masters or like PhD or whatever it was before coming to industry and start working and it was That's a true. trend like anyone i talked to legit really? like he would tell me oh i did my masters from india and then i came here or wow. i did my masters in the us and then i started working wow. right so then i thought about it to myself i'm like hmm, why like wh why would true. they do it you know and then it, it, it clicked because if i'm already like in this like education mentality and study like study mode per se why 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 do i have to take a break from that mm -hmm. and then come back to it later like honestly if i just continue like two years my like the concept the knowledge is still fresh everything because like what i learned is that like what you study and what like you do and work are completely two different things True. like you you barely apply what you study and like what, what you do you know so like since i'm already like good with the theory and stuff like that might as well just continue Fresh until off. like un until yeah while, while the ideas are, uh, and knowledge is still fresh in my head you know and then 
go straight to industry, industry as opposed to like taking a break working for like two years and it gets so hard like honestly the money is gonna get in the way like oh you're you're early like you have a steady income mm -hmm. you have a steady life why would you want to go back and yeah and, and you have to like stop, stop everything and go back it. to school and then look back for jobs and there's, no, there's nothing guaranteed exactly right? so this is why like um i decided over the summer that oh i want to do masters after i graduate from school and i since like since like i i decided over the summer i'm like okay i i'm just working right now like from eight to five or whatever it is what, what about like the rest of my time you know like i can i can easily fit it in i can study for like a month mm -hmm. and then take the exam wow like yeah I, before like and and the thing is like because i i have like a pretty crowded semester right now so like i wanted to get it out of the way before like the semester starts and like work starts cramming up true so this is what i did like i honestly like oh like, uh, i decided that i want to do masters what's the first step take the GRE you study for the GRE for a month or however long, like long you feel comfortable and you take it and it's done it's out of the way like now all I have to do is like uh, get the letter of the letters of recommendations and uh, statement of purpose and apply nice thanks nice. so like just uh, just a few points that you know because it's so natural to him he just breezes over it but one thing that I really liked is he scanned his surroundings when he was at Qualcomm he wasn't just trying to get the job done he was like, okay, let me learn about the people who are here full time, the people who are maybe in advanced positions, and let me see, you know, how they got there. So that was one of the first things. Make sure, like, you're not, you're never comfortable where you are. You're always aiming up. Uh, the second thing is the time management is just unbelievable. You know, he, before the semester even starts, he's like, I know it's going to be busy. I know, you know, this time is going to be crowded. You know, this time is going to, I'm going to have the midterms. It, it, you just need to develop the skill of managing your time and understanding your schedule. And then the third thing is planning ahead of time because when when you just wait for the you know for the moment to happen you're you're always going to be behind you're always going to forget something and even if you don't forget anything your your submission and the quality of your work is just not going to be up to par right so when he said okay i'm going to take some uh, you know i, I want to do masters and obviously the the applications aren't even due yet so when he did it in may or june whenever that was when he did that, the GRE back then, that was way ahead or way yeah ahead of when he was supposed to do it. But because he did it back then, now he can focus on the other stuff, including the, co the, the, the workload that he has now. So these are just some of the things that, you know, I would say like you, you would want to like learn or watch other people around you do, you know, these skills that you want to pick up and then try to implement them yourself. So I'm going to move on a little bit now onto um, the, your TA experience. So you're a TA aye for aye two aye. classes now. <laughs> And um, what I, I like, if you were to give someone a piece of advice on how to become a TA, by TA I mean teaching assistant. So, what, what in, at least at Purdue, what is the standard for becoming a teacher's assistant or a teaching assistant? So, ideally, you'd want to have like an A in the course or whatever, mm -hmm. like when you take it, so that like you're um, qualified enough to I see. TA this course. So, by yeah. A is the only like, because like A is the only metric that they can see that oh, this guy understands the educate like True. the. The contents of the course and stuff so that he probably can can help like other students who are taking okay. their now and, and would you say for the teaching assistant positions knowing the professor well also helps or maybe but to a lesser extent like w what would you say is more important in this case the grade or the the relationship i, I would i would i had to have to say it's the, the grade. grade yeah okay yeah. so if you know if, if you're really good at the subject but you know you know if you don't know the professor at all do you think it stands in the way of you know if, if you don't show up to classes but you're really good at the course and then you end up acing the class and then the professor's looking at the grades at the end of the semester he's like oh this guy's doing really well but i don't know do you think that ever stands in the way or? i mean because i mean there are a lot of people who do that right, like maybe yeah, they yeah. take the course in advance no, or whatever yeah like again they, it goes they, back to no it, it happens it okay. can it can happen that like a person just doesn't show up to class because he already knows them like knows the material and stuff and like he ends up acing everything I see. and at the end of the day like professors like they don't like obviously it would help to remember like your face when like True. when you're applying and like he looks at your application he's gonna like link the name to the face mm -hmm. but if if he sees a person that has an a and like goes to his cran like transcript and, and he sees he's he's all everything. like a's everything True. like a's and everything and like he doesn't know who the person is he doesn't have to know the person okay he's that's, that's fair. you know like, uh, yeah. this guy is smart enough like he, yeah. he's aced can... every class so like why why not you know that's nice okay so what would you say some of the you know i would say challenging aspects or risks of being a ta and what are some of the benefits as well of, of being a ta so you get like 
you got a lot of res like responsibility. That's true. Because when a student comes and asks you for a clarification of a concept and stuff, you have to like be certain that, that what you're giving him is correct or That's what true. is like it's the actual thing, not an opinion that you're giving. Yeah. Oh, I think it's this and I think it's that. And you you really you really have to like devote time out of your day to help like these people because if you're like if you're passionate enough about teaching them or actually making sure that they understand then you have to like spend some time with them to make sure that they understand the concept so it goes back to like if i understand the material well enough so that i can actually give them or convey the right message or like convey the right concepts to them then go and for it. yeah and go from there so like i would i would say that this is the this the is the number risk. one risk yeah because if you're not honestly giving them the right thing then they're learning wrong their grades are affected and it's not their fault because that's someone that's supposed to actually be teaching them correctly is not doing his job right and and, and one of the things like in other words just be, you need to have a conscious uh, like a live conscience and if, if if you just don't care about you know how people do or whatever i don't yeah we i don't think the ta position is right for you um and and what would you like what are some of the things that you know make you encourage uh TAing to someone like if someone's debating whether to TA or not what are mm -hmm. the, some of the things that you'd say to encourage him to become a TA and what are some of the things that you're like you know it's it's a really great thing but you know be ready to do this right it depends if I know the person or not okay. if I know the person and I see that he's he's he, he knows the content by heart and like this yeah. guy's actually like really smart and he he has the he has the aptitude of teaching because like not, not everyone can teach and sit down and can like um explain things well you know True. Some people actually know the concepts, but like they yeah. they, they can't communicate. That's, so communication that's true. is key. That's true. And um, also, like if he has time in his schedule, because then again, like this is only like uh, an add-on. Like you don't really have to do it if you don't have the time. Don't that's don't true. like try to force it into that's your schedule. True. Don't because if you do end up like becoming a teaching assistant, like the workload's gonna insanely increase, and you don't want to like mess with or in, have that interfere with like your studies and like your current semester because at this point like obviously teaching someone would be helpful and like would be nice mm -hmm. but i would say like like prioritize your own like work first work first and then see if you have extra time or like if you can fit it in your schedule then yeah by all means if you know the contents and like Go you're comfortable it. enough then become a ta why not so the time commitment is nothing to yeah it's like it's no joke basically it's right? actually yeah, yeah. yeah so i think this is the last question just to wrap things up um if if you had you know a few things to say to your freshman self or any any student who's a freshman coming from almost a similar background as you what would they be advice yeah like uh, anything like you know be careful about this or you know this is yeah i think advice is, is a great word for you yeah so I would say start making friends and it'd be ideal honestly to make friends in the same major that you're willing to go mm. into because like as as you said bro like you know we're we're friends before yeah. we even went into the major that's true that's also the case with like a bunch of other other, like, yeah. other people that are with us right now in the major so like honestly this group of people has helped every single one of us 100 get through this major 100 because no matter who you are you're gonna break down Face a struggle 100%. during during college 100%. but if you're alone bro like that's it forget it like you're gonna drown like somewhere you know but like you have to have someone around you to pick you up and I like see. and push you and mo motivate you and for us it was like we we didn't we didn't face a lot of like these moments where True. like we we broke down and like or at least they didn't last for too long exactly we had each other to support exactly and, and, and not even like mentally and psychologically but also academically, academically. you That's know 100%. like a group of five people always walking in help rooms together and always like going to lecture together and stuff like we we do everything together we help each other understand we help each other with like whoever is stuck in a homework problem or whatever like we so like we're always there for each other that's true because like chances are if you're five people not all of you are, are dumb or like not all of not dumb <laughs> person but like not all of you not don't understand what true. the concept is so like if one person does then they'll broadcast it to the exactly so like yeah th and this is the case with anything like really you know, and, like need help with something we're always there we're always there 100%. so like again this brings me back to the point of networking networking mm. is a huge thing in 100%. college in terms of professors students other Everything. people but try to like find your group of friends that you can honestly and i think you've, you've already said this in one of like your past posts on mm -hmm. instagram and 
you really need to like find a group 100%. of people that's going to push you 100%. on forward and, and alhamdulillah yani, I'm, yeah. I'm blessed enough that like um, I have you guys and uh, we all like we all make like each other better in, in a way like you know uh, 100%. so we always like help um, each other become the best they can be and I, I think this is like in terms of like uh, like the social life of, like aspect of college mm -hmm. but you have to really put your mind into going through this major and going whatever major that you want mm -hmm. like you're you're here for a reason Th and that's that's what m my day one mentality that I've I've always been here for a reason mm -hmm. and which is to, to learn to, right to get the degree man yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I came from Saudi bro like yeah. I'm halfway around the world yani, yeah, yeah. Dini, bro, and, like my parents spent money and stuff Absolutely. like uh, bro like I, I'm not gonna come here and like mess around you know like True. I'm here for a reason and I have to like deliver you know like I'm, I'm not here to fool around like I, I'm here to like get my degree and start working and start doing whatever that it is 100%. to do so like you have to set yourself to this mentality and 100%. so like my advice would be just like network with people and set your mind like to to whatever like that you actually want to achieve and surround yourself with people that you can that that they can get you there 100 like, yeah. well unfortunately that's all the time we have for today um honestly if it were up to me i can talk to this guy all day long like 100%. we've literally been on phone calls that lasted hours it's not even hard um but we just want to make this a realistic youtube video if you guys want to know more about him if or if the audience wants to know more about you what's the best way to reach out to you uh so I mean, I can like you can put my whatever like social media or like okay, email or whatever like in in the bio in the or like yeah, in the description link and uh, I don't yeah really yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine it's no, 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 like, it works both ways yeah whatever yeah. like uh, and even like if one someone wants to text me you can give my number as well but like okay. don't don't yeah I'm not like, gonna put your number <laughs> yeah, in public yeah, yeah, yeah. but basically guys if you have any questions because okay like Omar is is an incredible guy you can ask anything about like sports you can ask anything about academics finding a job uh, you know mentally staying focused throughout the semester anything you know even like preparing for exams he's one of the best exam or test takers that i've ever come across like even if it's a subject you know he doesn't fully understand or whatever he makes or he finds a way to make it happen where he does well so if you ever have questions about that anything that we discussed today or even if you want to see him more of him or another interview of him please either reach out to him or to me but for now i'm going to say thank you so much for this interview it was Habibi. great having you man Habibi, bro. Love you, bro. and yeah i hope you guys enjoy this please yeah. uh give us your feedback and we'll see you in another episode and honestly if, if you guys like want to hear more from us as a duo then yeah. I'm, I'm more than happy than to do this again 100 percent. but until then you guys enjoy the rest of your day take care